intermittent fasting, two words that have taken the health world by storm. Millions of people swear by it. Celebrities talk about it. Scientists study it. But here's what most people get completely wrong. They think intermittent fasting is about willpower, about gritting your teeth through hunger, about suffering minute by minute until you can finally eat again. The truth is something far more fascinating. Your body was literally designed for this. Every cell, every hormone, every ancient survival mechanism inside you knows exactly what to do when food stops coming. And once you understand what's actually happening inside you, hour by hour, everything changes. The struggle transforms. The confusion disappears. And you start working with your biology instead of fighting against it. Now, before we dive in a quick note, this is educational content, not medical advice. If you have health conditions or you're on medications, talk to your healthcare professional first. Fasting is powerful, but it's not for everyone. So what actually happens when you skip that first meal and let the hours tick by? Let's walk through it together. From the first wave of hunger to the moment your body unlocks abilities most people never experience. And somewhere around hour 16, something remarkable begins that might just change how you think about food forever. It starts within the first few hours. You skip breakfast or maybe you push back lunch and your body notices almost immediately. Blood sugar begins to drop. Insulin, the hormone that controls how your cells absorb energy, starts to fall. And your brain, so accustomed to a steady stream of glucose, sends out its first distress signal. This is where the discomfort begins. You might feel restless, a little foggy, maybe even irritable. Your concentration wavers, your stomach growls, and that voice in your head starts whispering that maybe this whole fasting thing isn't for you. Here's what's actually happening. Think of your body as having two fuel tanks. The first is a small glucose tank stored in your liver as glycogen. It's quick energy, easy to access, but limited. Maybe 12 to 24 hours worth at most. The second tank is massive. It's your fat reserves, tens of thousands of calories just sitting there waiting. But your body prefers the easy tank first. So in these early hours, your liver releases glycogen to keep blood sugar stable. Your cells are still running on glucose and your brain, which burns through about 120 grams of glucose every single day, is demanding its usual supply. That irritability you feel. That's your brain throwing a tantrum, like a toddler who's been told no more candy. But this is not weakness. This is your metabolism waking up. Your body is noticing that the usual food supply has stopped and it's preparing for something your ancestors knew intimately. A shift that evolution designed for survival. By hour 6 to 12, something interesting happens. Hunger doesn't keep climbing. It actually comes in waves. You expect it to build and build until it becomes unbearable, but that's not how your body works. Ghrelin, the hormone responsible for hunger, signals spikes around your usual meal times. Then it falls. Then it spikes again. Then it falls again. Each wave a little smaller than the last. This is crucial to understand. Hunger is not a constant flood. It's a series of waves. And if you don't feed each wave, they get smaller. Your body realizes food isn't coming on the usual schedule and starts adjusting its expectations. Around our in bite to 10, most people hit their peak struggle. This is the moment when that leftover pizza in the fridge starts calling your name. When your co-worker's lunch smells impossibly good. When every advertisement seems to feature food. Your willpower feels tested to its limit. But here's the thing nobody tells you. This is also the moment right before the breakthrough. Most people quit here. They assume the hunger will only get worse. 
They don't realize they're minutes away from their body, making a decision that changes everything. Stay hydrated during this phase. As insulin drops, your body releases water and electrolytes. A glass of water with a pinch of salt can make a surprising difference. You're not just fighting hunger. You're supporting a biological transition. Push through to hour 12 and your body crosses a line. Glycogen stores are running low. Your liver looks for another energy source. And it finds one. Fat. Your body begins breaking down fatty acids and converting them into something called ketone bodies. This is the metabolic switch. The moment your system shifts from burning sugar to burning stored fat. And here's where things get fascinating. Ketones don't just fuel your muscles. They cross the blood-brain barrier and feed your neurons directly. Your brain, which was screaming for glucose just hours ago, suddenly receives a different kind of fuel. Cleaner. Steadier. More sustainable. Think of glucose like burning newspaper. Quick flame, bright for a moment, then gone. You need constant feeding to keep the fire going. Ketones are like burning oak logs. Slow ignition, but once they catch, they burn steady and long. No spikes, no crashes, just sustained energy. Dr. Mark Matson, a neuroscientist at Johns Hopkins University, spent over 25 years studying exactly this moment. What happens to the brain when we fast? His research revealed something remarkable. Fasting triggers the production of BDNF brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It's a protein that helps your brain create new neural connections, strengthen existing ones, and protect against degeneration. But here's what makes Matson's work even more compelling. He doesn't just study intermittent fasting. He practices it every single day for over 35 years. When asked why his answer was simple, because my brain works better. This isn't a scientist reading data from a distance. This is someone who lives the science because he's seen what it does. Between hours 12 and 16, many fasters report something they didn't expect. The fog lifts. Focus sharpens. A strange calm settles in. You're not bouncing between sugar highs and crashes anymore. Your brain is running on steady fuel and it shows. Tasks feel easier. Distractions fade. Some people describe it as entering a flow state without trying. This isn't placebo. It's chemistry. Your brain, freed from the constant roller coaster of glucose spikes, operates in a more stable environment. Neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine flow more consistently. The mental noise quiets. And you start to understand why ancient cultures from every corner of the world practiced fasting, not just for physical health, but for mental clarity. Here's a question for you. At what hour does your hunger usually peak? Is it around hour 8, hour 10, earlier, later? Drop your number in the comments. I'm curious if there's a pattern among people watching this. Now, let's talk about what happens between hours 16 and 24, because this is where your body truly shows what it's capable of. By hour 16, you've entered full ketosis. Fat burning is in high gear, but something else activates, something your cells have been waiting to do. Autophagy. The word comes from Greek meaning self-eating. It sounds strange, maybe even alarming, but it's actually one of the most powerful healing processes your body possesses. Think of autophagy like Marie Kondo visiting your cells. She goes through every corner, every compartment, asking, Does this spark function? Damaged proteins get broken down. Misfolded structures get recycled. Cellular waste that's been accumulating gets cleared out. Your cells don't just survive during fasting. They clean house. This process is linked to reduced risk of cancer, Alzheimer's type 2 diabetes, and accelerated aging. 
When your body isn't constantly busy digesting food, it redirects energy toward maintenance and repair. It's biological housekeeping at the deepest level. And while autophagy cleans up your hormones, shift dramatically. Human growth hormone can surge up to five times its normal levels. This isn't about building massive muscles. It's about preservation and repair. Growth hormone protects your lean tissue while your body burns fat for fuel. You're not losing muscle. You're losing what you don't need. Here's the evolutionary story behind all of this. 50,000 years ago, your ancestors didn't have refrigerators. They didn't have grocery stores or delivery apps. They hunted. And often they hunted hungry. Days could pass between successful kills. If their bodies simply collapsed during those periods, humanity would have ended right there. But evolution had other plans. Humans who stayed sharp during scarcity survived. Their focus heightened. Their senses sharpened. Their bodies learned to preserve muscle and burn fat. Those who couldn't adapt didn't pass on their genes. You are the descendant of survivors. Every cell in your body carries code that's been tested across thousands of generations. When you fast, you're not doing something unnatural. You're returning to a rhythm your biology knows intimately. By hour 20 to 2024, 20, most fasters report a surprising shift. The hunger that dominated those early hours has faded almost entirely. Energy feels stable. Cravings disappear. There's a sense of control that's hard to describe until you've experienced it. You realize how much of your day used to revolve around food. Thinking about it, planning it, eating it, and now that noise has quieted. Your body isn't panicking. It's optimizing. Every system working together with remarkable efficiency. Fat burning, cell repair, hormone balance, mental clarity. This is what your biology can do when you give it the chance. Now, if you feel dizzy and it won't pass or your heart starts racing, listen to your body. These are signals. Don't ignore them. Drink water with electrolytes. And if symptoms persist, stop the fast and consult a healthcare professional. Fasting is a tool, not a test of toughness. Finally, let's talk about breaking the fast. Because this moment matters more than most people realize. After hours of cellular repair and hormonal optimization, your body is in a heightened state. Insulin sensitivity is at its peak. Your gut is primed to absorb nutrients efficiently. What you eat first determines whether you lock in those benefits or undo them. Think of your metabolism like it's waking from a deep sleep. It needs gentle reactivation, not a shock. Breaking a fast with processed food, refined carbs, or a massive meal causes insulin to spike sharply. All that stability you built gets disrupted. Instead, start simple. Whole foods. Maybe some vegetables, healthy fats, or a small portion of protein. Chew slowly. Eat mindfully. Give your digestive system time to wake up. A calm first meal tells your body the fast has ended safely. No panic, no stress. And here's what many people discover over time. Fasting changes your relationship with food. You stop eating out of habit or boredom. You start eating with intention. Food becomes nourishment again, not background noise. That might be the most profound transformation of all. So let's bring it all together. Intermittent fasting isn't about punishment. It isn't about proving how tough you are. It's about understanding your biology. Working with systems that have been refined across millions of years of evolution. Those first hours of discomfort. That's your metabolism waking up. The hunger waves. They pass. The mental fog. It lifts once ketones take over. The cellular cleanup, the hormone optimization, the fat burning, it's all happening automatically once you give your body the conditions it was designed for. You're not fighting your body when you fast. You're finally listening to it. Now I want to hear from you.
Some experts say 16 hours is the sweet spot. Others push for 24 or beyond. What's your fasting window? And do you think the struggle is worth the transformation? Let me know in the comments. And here's a challenge. Describe your first fast in one word. Was it brutal, surprising, liberating, life-changing drop? That word below. I read every single comment. If someone you know has been curious about fasting but scared to try, share this video with them. Sometimes, understanding the science is all it takes to turn fear into confidence. Subscribe if you want more content that changes how you see your body. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss what's coming next. Because next time we're exploring what happens when you do this for 30 days straight. The results might surprise you. Your body is more capable than you know. You just proved it.